fundamentals. This is going to be episode five, the flat wash. So we're going to look at the flat wash today, and we've sort of looked at this in previous episodes. Uh, I don't know that I literally explained it as a flat wash, um, but nevertheless, um, you, you will have already seen a very small version of the flat wash. And as a matter of fact, um, we're going to repeat that again now. So a flat wash is really any area of paint that you're going to lay down and your desired look is a, an even distribution of your pigment. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a little shape there. Now I've got a whole bunch of paint. My puddle's already mixed up and you can see this is a standard side plate um, and it's got a lot of paint in there. So I don't need all this paint for that area, but I know I'm going to be painting a big shape here and I'm going to be doing a second one. So we're going to look at uh, a few different instances of creating a flat wash from a small little area of even color to a larger area of even color. And then we're going to do another large area of even color um, using a different technique. So somewhere in there, you should be able to find one that, that works for you. Um, though there's going to be some things to speak about uh, when it comes to the, the different versions. So I'm going to be using a larger brush today than I have in the other episodes. I've kind of been sticking to around the number eight size because I haven't been doing anything very big. But as soon as I start dealing with larger shapes, I want to move to a bigger brush. And so in this instance, I'm going to be using a number 12 round. Um, it's a very good idea to use a large brush when you want to paint bigger areas, just because it can hold a lot more paint. And it's the size of the brush and the amount of paint that it can hold, you can cover a larger area uh, a lot more efficiently. And when you're dealing with water going onto paper and then that water drying on the surface of the paper, it, as it dries with the pigment in it, you can create hard edges that you wouldn't want in uh, a large, even distribution of color. So using a large brush is a really good idea. So I'm just going to take some of this color, which is transparent pyrrole orange, very lovely orange color. And I'm just going to get a little bit of the moisture out of the tip. And I'm going into this little small area here. And like I've done before, I'm just going to start laying that color out. And what I'm also going to do as I do this is stay in contact with the edges of the paint that I'm creating, because I don't want to give those edges a chance to dry. Because as soon as they start to dry, that's when I can start getting little hard edges and looks like little burned in lines. So there's a nice even distribution of the orange. Now, not too difficult when it's this size, but when we get into bigger sizes, it does get to be a little bit harder. Um, I was taking a look at the bottom here to see if there was any paint pooling up, but because I checked some of that excess moisture, all this excess moisture that you saw me get rid of at the front, I went in here and tried to paint through this, some of that would be built up at the bottom. And then that would probably leave me in a situation where I get the excess out and I would just go back in with my brush at the very bottom and just suck the excess up with my brush. So there's a small little flat wash, but what about something bigger? This isn't going to be huge, but the idea is going to be the same, um, whether it's going to be this size or something bigger or this whole piece of paper, even onwards to um, an 8 by 10 or even larger. Much larger, I would definitely be considering different brushes, but for what I'm doing here, I think that a number 12 is going to work out very well. So I'm just going to draw a bigger shape here. kind of know what my target is. And I'm 
Using this piece of paper loose, you could tape this down onto a board if it makes it easier for you. Uh, I do actually have a board prepared for the next part I'm going to do. But even for this, I'm just going to be doing one layer of color. I'm just going to hold this piece of paper in my hand. I wouldn't do this if it was a painting. I would have it taped down onto a board, but just for the purposes of this demonstration, I don't see too much of an issue holding on to it. The reason why I wouldn't hold it like this if I was going to be making a painting is because I could risk getting my finger on here and I don't want my finger oils in the areas that I might be painting. So, All right, so loading my brush up. Now I'm just going to get a little bit out because honestly I want to hold on to as much as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be working from the top down and I lifted up my paper and you can't quite see this but you can see that it is at a bit of an angle but it's about 15 20 degrees incline and I'm going to want to use that because what I want to do you saw in here where I was always trying to hold on to the edges as I was continuing to expand the shape down to the bottom so that those edges don't get dry and I'm going to be doing the same thing here, but I'm going to use a little bit of gravity and a lot of paint to try and help me achieve the, the same goal by creating a bead of paint. And that's where the moisture is going to sit and help prevent the edge of my wash from drying up. And then it will allow me to continue taking this wash all the way down to the bottom. So again, I'm just going to take a little bit of paint out. I know I'd already done that, but I'm just doing it again. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to go along the top. And if you see along the bottom here, now what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit more paint and just drop this in here. And what you should see is a little bead forming along the bottom, this little darker area at the bottom. That is the bead I'm referring to. As long as I keep that, I can just keep bringing this down. Now you don't want too big a bead because the tilt, the gravity, all that kind of stuff, you could end up with big droplets running down your page. And so really all I'm doing is just trying to take this bead and continue it down the page. And if I see that bead start to disappear or get too thin, then I pick up a little bit more paint. And continue. See, so still a bead. Now, if you're holding this thing flat, you're not going to see the bead. But because I have it at an incline, the bead shows up really nice. You don't want this too steep. Again, you don't want the paper, the paint to run right off the page here. The bead's getting a little bit thin, so I'm just grabbing a little bit more paint. And I have, you know, a fair bit of leeway as long as I keep that bead present. Because that, again, that bead is what's keeping my edge wet and preventing it from drying up. Because the other thing that can happen is if it dries up, you can see banding start to appear in your wash. I don't know if that's happened for you before, but when I was first learning to do washes, it happened to me all the time. And it looked like a bad... Photoshop gradient. That's kind of my photography background speaking there. All of a sudden the sky just looks weird. All this little banding in it. So again, just keeping that bead alive. You keep going down. And I have lots of paint. I don't have to go in and remix the paint. So I don't have to worry. I'm not going into water at all. So the consistency of my paint stays the same. So the hue is going to be consistent all the way through. The value is going to be consistent all the way through. And 
keeping this bead alive helps prevent any hard edges from forming as I bring this down. And we're almost there. I don't know that I need to worry so much about that bead anymore because now I have an area that I am comfortable with. And we finish our journey right down at the bottom. Now here is an opportunity. See how I have this little excess paint there? This is what I was talking about earlier. I just go and I get rid of the excess paint from my brush. So now there's less moisture in my brush than there is on the paper. And then I can just take my brush and just go in there and just suck up that excess paint. You don't want that buildup of paint at the bottom to sit there because that can then flow back up into areas that are starting to dry and you can get little cauliflowers. So there is a small flat wash. Just paint the whole thing in, use a good size brush and stay in contact with the edges and you should get a nice even distribution of your paint. And then there is how you would handle a larger area. Creating that bead, using a little bit of, of incline so that you get some gravity, so that you create that bead and then it's just feeding the bead and bringing it down the wash and you get a nice even distribution of your paint. And you can see this is starting to dry up here, similar to there. The hue's the same, because I'm using the same puddle, right? So I get some consistency in the overall um, washes. So, since I just mentioned consistency, we're gonna go do a different version of a flat wash. And one that I think some people find a little bit easier. Uh, but honestly, the bead is pretty straightforward once you've done it a few times. It's just a question of making sure you have enough paint. Not having enough paint makes it very difficult to maintain the bead because the bead needs to be fed and that's its food. So I'm going to put this out of view and then I'm going to bring this little board in. So I've taped this piece of paper down because we're going to do another flat wash, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to make sure my brush is clean. And I'm just going to put that right there for now. And then I'm just going to draw a similar shape. Now, almost everything I think you've seen me do, with the exception of one of the little exercises I did in the soft, soft edges episode, um, I'm going wet on dry, okay? So that whole um, wash, both those washes we just did, the paper was completely dry, um, but I still got nice even washes across both of those. Now we're gonna do something slightly different, and there's gonna be uh, a little thing to discuss um, which you might pick up on. You might not, I don't know. So I'm just taking my brush and I'm gonna load it up with water. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this shape and I'm just going to start painting this shape with water. And I'm going to do my best to fill it as evenly as possible and trying to keep the level of moisture distributed throughout so I don't have any real dry areas in my little shape. And it's important to make sure that you've got your paint mixed up first, right? So I've got my paints already ready. Already ready. Um, so we just come across the bottom. 
Now what this does is kind of prepares the surface so it'll be easier for this paint to spread out. And because it's already wet, it'll be harder for the paint to create hard edges because it's the dry paper the hard edge will start to form on. You may recall that from the episode on hard edges, episode three. So what I'm doing is creating a wet area so I don't get any hard edges. Now I grab my paint. I'm not gonna worry so much about the moisture control because I'm going into a pretty wet area. And again, I'm still going to use this idea of gravity. And I'm just going to feed right into this whole thing. Just let it run down. It's all pretty wet. And we'll just come down. And then we'll just feed right into the bottom here. Now, you'll notice that I start getting a fair bit of moisture buildup at the bottom. That's one of the main things you want to be careful of when you're doing this method, because I now have additional water on the paper that I didn't have with the other one. So this down here is definitely something you're gonna end up needing to deal with, which means getting the moisture out of my brush, going back in and sucking it up. Now there's gonna be another thing we need to talk about with respect to this specific way of going about a flat wash. So there you go, a fairly even distribution of paint again. But if you are have a pretty keen eye for color and value, one thing you might notice right away is that this wash, this new one, is a little bit lighter than this wash. And the reason for that is the fact that I set up my value in this plate. The amount of water, the amount of pigment, and that's what I use to create both of these. No changes to the puddle at all. And they look similar in hue and value. But this one, because I have introduced water onto the surface before putting in my pigment, I have in effect diluted this. I didn't put the water in there, but I put the water all across here and then added this to it. It has the same effect as putting a little bit of water in here and basically lightening the tint of the hue. So it's something that you just need to be aware of if this is the, the way of creating a large flat area of color that you prefer, you're going to need to find that balance of increasing your pigment levels in your puddle so that you'll end up with the size and value of wash that you want. Um, because putting that water in, if this looks good and you do a little test, it dries, you're like, oh, that's great. Then I'm gonna to go to my flat wash and get this all wet and then apply your paint. You're going to be disappointed because you're gonna find out that when this dries, it's actually going to be lighter than you had hoped. So there is the flat wash, a small little flat wash, again, similar to some previous episodes. Here's a larger version of a flat wash. 
using the bead and a little bit of gravity to expand that wash evenly down. And then another version of a flat wash where we're basically wetting the area and then putting the paint into it and letting it distribute out into the pre-wet shape. That's also another reason why I taped this piece down in particular, because it's, I don't know if you can see this or not in the video, but it is buckling quite a bit um, because there's a lot more moisture on this paper as a result of doing the water first and then the paint. So it's just a double layer of moisture. So it's gonna ripple and expand a little bit more than it does when I'm just doing it wet on dry. This has got a little bit of buckling in it, but it's something that I can manage just hand holding it. It's no, no real big deal, but this one has definitely buckled a little bit. So there you go, everybody. There is um, episode five, the flat wash. I hope you, you know, learned a little something about this pretty fundamental technique and uh, stay tuned for episode six coming up soon we're going to look at um, a gradated wash and yeah until then paint on my friends and if you're enjoying these videos uh, please i would really appreciate it if you took the time to just you know like the video and perhaps even if you you know want to keep watching these as I create them. I don't have a set schedule, so you can't say, oh, I'm just gonna tune in on Tuesday and there'll be one. Um, but if you subscribe, then you'll get a notification uh, every time I, I put one up. So it's, I'm quite busy with some teaching right now, so it's kind of whenever I have an opportunity to sit down and, and create one, uh, I'm gonna put one up. I've got about 24 currently on a list that uh, I'm going to slowly work through. So I, I think this will be a, a really great thing. Um, and I hope that it will be of great use to people, help some people out, see some techniques visually that, uh, you know, sometimes we only see them in books or, or they're just topics that don't get a lot of attention in, in a workshop. So, so once again, thank you very much. Um, We'll see you next time.